Some paramotors are easier to get seated. Some paramotors are easier to get seated out. Let's start with harness geometry today. Welcome to my classroom insights into paramotor geometry. This is part 21. I will share all my knowledge about paramotor geometry and design. So you will learn how to make a qualified judgment. What is the best paramotor for you? Harness is not only important for comfort in flight. First, we need to run, take off, and in the end, we need to land. In today's lecture, we'll go through every single phase. Let's start with takeoff. So this is the moment when I'm already running, applying a quarter of throttle, checking my glider, but not yet getting any lift from the glider. Thus, the paramotor is hanging on my, on the shoulder strap is hanging a bit lower. The scenario is completely different right after takeoff when I'm hanging in the paramotor, getting lift, but this time it's not the paramotor hanging on my shoulders, it's me hanging in the harness basically on my balls. Now, as you see, the seat board is in both cases folded behind my body and getting locked up with my butt is the same case here. Getting the seat board locked will not allow the bar to come up, although the seat board is already applying pressure on the back of my legs. Now the question how deep you're gonna sag in the, in the harness and that depends on the position and length of your leg straps. If the leg straps are way low or are really loose, you will end up hanging really low in the harness. It's not an issue at this moment, but it will be in the next phase. This is the transition between hanging in the harness on your balls right after takeoff and getting seated. At this moment, what you want is raise your knees and you will hope the seat board will slide up underneath your legs. As it's locked out and when you raise your knees, the crucial point is the relative position of your butt and this strap. If your butt is lower than this strap, it's totally useless to raise your knees because the seat board will not slide up. It will not be pulled by the seat board strap. In this case, you will need the help of your hand or sometimes uh, paramotor manufacturers use a step up bar. It's a bar that you step on and lift your body, raise your body to get seated. If your butt is higher than the seat board strap, it's pretty easy, you just uh, lift, uh, raise your knees and the seat board will automatically slide up underneath your body. Now the relative position of your butt and the seat board strap is given by two factors. First, the leg straps, that determine how low you will sag in the harness and the position of the seat board strap itself. So for getting seated easily, the ideal configuration is to have your leg straps really tight and positioned high so they will not let you sag really low and to have the seat board strap rather to the lower end of the seat board. So this means it will raise your legs and get seated. As you notice that the bar uh, at this moment is still being pulled down by the seat board being locked up. But as soon as you raise your knees and you get seated, the bar will come up into its natural position. Now the story gets totally different when you prepare for landing and you need to get out of the seat, you need to get into sort of a standing position. 
hanging out of the harness awaiting for the touchdown. Maybe you would expect that when you, when you press your legs down, you press the seat board down, that the bar will move down, but it's, it's not that way. Your only anchor point in flight is the carabiner. This means it's not the front of the bar moving down, but rather is the back of the bar moving up. Now, if you want to move the bar up, it means you will need literally lift the whole paramotor and part of your body upwards. It will not happen. Fact is, when you want to get out of the seat, the bar hardly moves and you end up in sort of position like this, the bar pretty much remains the same and the only thing that happens is that the harness falls down, the seat board comes slightly up and you end up being sort of straight but in a slightly reclined position. Now that reclined position is not a big deal because you're moving fast forward on the, t on the landing so as you touch down with your heels or your feet you just continue to run so it's not that big deal. Previously when I analyzed seating in after takeoff I've said it, uh, it's good to have this strap move forward so to get seated in. Now it's the opposite case for getting out of the seat. If this, if this strap would be way too much forward it would be very difficult or even impossible to tilt the seat board this way. The more backwards you have the seat board if it was like this the easier is to tilt the seat board for landing. In fact, having it way in the back would actually be possible to lock the seat board again behind your butt just like we had it on takeoff. That would prevent this reclined position and you will end up landing in a more upright position. Now let's have a look how it is with the high suspension systems. Well, I honestly believe with the high suspension system the situation is a little bit more difficult simply because this whole suspension is very rigid, the bars don't move at all and uh, when you fold the seat board you will end up in a reclined position probably even more than with the gooseneck bars. So it seems like the paramotor manufacturer has basically two options. First, putting the leg, leg straps high and the seat strap to the front will make it easier to get into the harness but more difficult to get out. The other option is to put the leg strap low and the seat, seat strap more to the back that will make it more difficult to get into the harness but easy to get out. What's my personal preference? Definitely the first option and the reason is safety. I believe that it's crucial to have to get seated into the harness without the use of your hands, without distracting your attention. The disadvantage, uh, it's more demanding and you need to give more effort to get out of the harness. It's not that big deal because you have plenty of time to prepare for landing and do it correctly with the right technique. Thanks for watching. Should you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, in the next video, we will discuss how harness geometry affects your comfort while carrying the paramotor and running on takeoff. Stay with us, please hit the subscribe button and see you soon.